Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about other ways to invest when you don't want to buy a home of your own. Now perhaps you've just started out in your working life and you know people around you are telling you to buy a home, buy a home, but you don't want to yet. Perhaps you're not ready to move out of your parents' home. Perhaps you're not wanting the anchor of owning a place of your own. What are some of the other ways that you can invest your money to make the most out of your income that you're now earning? This video goes out to people that are just starting out their working lives, but also to all of you out there that are already working and wanting more from your money. So my recommendation to everyone, regardless if you want to buy a property or not of your own, is to do something with your money in the meantime. The worst thing you can do is say to yourself, I don't want to buy a property, and then a few years later down the track, you've not bought a property, you've not saved any of your income, you've not done anything, because then it was just an excuse not to buy property. It wasn't an alternative to do something else. So if you're living at home with mum and dad, you people out there, make the most of this opportunity. This is one of those golden times in life where you may be working full time even perhaps after uni, you're earning money, your expenses are as low as they'll ever be in your life potentially. Do something wise with your money. Start saving some of it. Um, okay, so here are three tips. Three things that you can do instead of buying a property for whatever reason, instead of buying a home. Number one, start saving anyway. Use a high interest bank account of your choice and start saving. Put that money to good use, get a head start in life. Things may change in the future and you may want to buy a property or you may not, but in the meantime, you need to save. If you don't save, you won't be able to start any other investment portfolio. You won't have any emergency money available to you. You won't even be able to do the other things that you perhaps you want to do like traveling. You need to start savings. Use the money wisely that you're earning now. Put it away. Maximize it. Limit your expenses such as going out and buying clothes and whatnot. Save as much of that money as you can. You will not get another opportunity like this if you are currently living at home to start your savings. If you're already out of home, start your savings, but perhaps just in a smaller version of it. You need to start saving. Um, pick a high interest bank account of your choice, like I mentioned, something that's in another bank account, another banking institution that's away from your normal eyesight and away from your normal bank account so you're not tempted to spend it. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Start your savings. Number two, take some of those savings and invest in a managed fund. You can invest in a managed fund, which is essentially like a group of shares that have been put together for you by an investment manager. You can go invest in direct shares, but usually with that, it's, it's quite hard to add a small amount to a portfolio over, over a period of time. You need to save up money, buy the shares. With a managed fund, you can start that from as little as $1,000 and $100 a month. That $100 a month, or more if you can, is a fabulous way to show disciplined savings, money getting taken straight from your bank account each month and put into your investment portfolio by the investment manager. It's disciplined savings that helps you take advantage of dollar cost averaging, which means buying shares at different prices over time. Each month the share prices will fluctuate and you can pick them, you can buy them when they're higher or lower, so it's a really good way to get ahead. But the beauty of that is that over a number of years, and with a managed fund, you really should be doing it for say three, four, five years or more, you'll find you've got savings there that you didn't even miss because of that small amount that was taken from your bank account each time. That's something that you can't do with direct shares, so a managed fund, you can do that. And you don't have to limit your savings to $100 a month, you can put away more if you want, and you can change that amount if need be, if things in your situation change. The beauty of a managed fund is that you'll be able to invest into growth assets such as properties and shares done by the investment manager on your behalf, uh, which is something that a bank account can't give you. A high interest bank account, for example, will pay you interest, small amount of interest by the banks, and no chance of capital growth, which means no chance of your account balance going up unless you add your interest to the, to the bank account each, each week or each month you paid that. With a managed fund, you get you earn income, but you also earn capital growth. That's the value of the shares that you own going up. So it can be a great way to grow your wealth just by starting a small amount. 
there's other avenues for investing that you can pick. There's things like just ETFs, direct shares, like I mentioned. Um, oh, geez, all sorts of things. I don't even want to get into them right now. I just say managed fund because it's one of the most simplest and easiest. You can pick a fund. There's a lot of talk these days, like by the Barefoot Investor, for example, about keeping your fees low when it comes to fund managers. And yes, that's very true. You want to pick a fund, even if it's just an index fund with a low management fee, and go with that. You can seek advice from a financial advisor if you're not sure, or there's some, or your bank, or there's some online that you can open up as well. But seek advice if you're not sure which managed fund is suitable for you. Um, that managed fund as well, you may change your mind in a few years about buying a property. You can sell down that managed fund portfolio, have the cash paid into your bank account within five to 10 working days, and there's some money towards your deposit. So it's a great way of starting your investing on the side. Um, you can, like I said, choose direct shares, but with that, you're going to have to save up the money first and then buy a parcel of shares. And let's be honest, when you're left to your own will with saving and investing, sometimes it's not done versus an investment manager taking that money straight from your bank account every month. It's a great disciplined savings. Somebody else almost doing it for you, taking control out of your hands. Okay. Number three option to you, if you're not ready to buy a home of your own, consider rent vesting. Rent vesting is when you rent where you live, unless you're living at home with your parents, of course, then that's even better because it's gonna be the cheapest way possible uh, for you. But if you are living out of home, renting will usually be cheaper than owning a home of your own because you're not paying bank interest and things like that to the, to the bank for the loan. You're just paying rent. So it's usually cheaper than owning your home. The caveat to that about renting is if you rent and don't invest, you're just renting. That's when people say renting is dead money, it's a waste of money because you're paying the landlord the rent. But if you rent where you live by intention, on purpose, and then you buy an investment property to rent out to someone else for income and growth, now you're a rent investor. Now your rent money is no longer dead money. You're choosing to rent because you wanna keep your expenses low or live in a better location, something that perhaps you couldn't afford to buy in, keeping your expenses low helps you then to buy an investment property on the side that then helps you to manage the property, keep it looked after, pay the bills, whatnot. When you do rent investing, the beauty is you're an investor with an investment property which comes with tax deductions, anything associated with, with managing the property, bank interest, maintenance, um, rates, all that is tax deductible when you're renting out a property versus when you own a home of your own, none of that is tax deductible. So with a rental property, you usually pay less tax, you have better tax offsets, um, and you have the, the, the point of the investment property, which is to go up in value over time and also receive that rental income. So to recap, rent investing is when you rent where you live for lifestyle and to keep your expenses low, but then you buy an investment property to rent to someone else for income and tax benefits, and that's called rent vesting. So even if you have no intention of buying your own home right now, still think of buying a property, but perhaps buy an investment property. It usually makes much more financial sense to do it that way. And then that gives you some more breathing room to either live where you wanna live, as in suburb choice, be able to move around still because you're renting, or stay at home with mum and dad just that little bit longer. So there are three options to you if you have no intention of buying any, a property just now. Like I said, Use your money wisely. Don't miss this opportunity just because you don't want to buy a home. There are other ways out there to make money and rent investing, for example, is becoming very popular these days. So happy investing, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that video and stay tuned for more videos. Bye.